Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Josh, and I am going to be the track manager today for our talk with uh, Paul Guido. He's going to be master of the interview. Paul is an IT security professional with over 25 years of IT experience, currently employed in the San Antonio Financial Institution, where he is a security janitor cleaning windows. That's pretty cool. So let's... Uh, Turn it over to Paul, and uh, we'll get started for you guys. Yeah, and uh, so I've been working here in the in San Antonio area for financial institutions uh, for over 23 years. Uh, I currently um, work in the security operations area, and from time to time, we need uh, people to work in, in the area for me and for my colleagues at the organization, and we're trying to uh, interview and, and get more people to work. And so uh, during so in the last few interview sessions that we've done for the last few positions, um, I've noticed a, a, a large uh, valley between uh, the, the different candidates that are out there. Uh, apparently, they have run the gauntlet and they have uh, been able to get through the AI or whatever else is used by our HR department or anyone's HR department these days to get their resume to the top of the list and get that job interview. Uh, but then they go to the interview and even though they've done all of these things ahead of time, it's just, it, it just doesn't work for them. Uh, either maybe they oversold their, inter, uh, their resume or maybe they just need to get a few more extra skills and tasks uh, uh, that they can do to um, push themselves over the top to be able to get that job. So let's get ready. First, I really recommend NIST. Uh, NIST has a bunch of wonderful documentation on just about everything when it comes to cybersecurity. And one of the things that I really, really like it, that came out in 2017, and now it's been updated in 2020, is the NICE document, the National Initiative for Cybersecurity Education. So, so they kind of changed their terminology. They used to do um, tasks, knowledge, skills, and abilities. Now they've changed it into task statements, knowledge, and skill statements. Um, but it's nice because if you want a particular role or position in IT, this gives you, um, uh, oh, you might want to mute your mic there on the other side. I hear a little bit of background noise. Um, what you might want to do is, is Look up a particular position that you're interested in doing and see how many of the skills uh, statements and task statements and knowledge that you've already gained to uh, put you in the right spot to get that particular position. And it also gives you an idea of the deficiencies and things that you might want to improve upon to make sure that you work really well and you're going to succeed in that position, whether it's the resume portion of it or the interview or actually doing the work. Uh, it kind of gives you a, a much better foundation to make sure that you're ready to go for those particular jobs. And this nice document, it's okay. It's a bit technical and it's a bit dry, uh, but it's also a, a wonderful source of data. So please consult that. Like I said, it was updated in November 2020. So um, they've uh, changed it a little bit. Uh, I try and uh, make sure that when we are looking to hire people, that they actually um, fit into the roles for this uh, cybersecurity education document. The other thing I really recommend, uh, if you just kind of want to get excited about finding a position in uh, IT and IT security, is to go to cyberseek.org and look at their heat map. Their heat map allows you to categorize jobs that are open out there in a couple of different ways. One of them, you can look at them by state, and the other one, you can look at it by uh, area. So there's actually a, a San Antonio, New Braunfels area, and it shows the total number of job openings that are there, um, workforce employed, uh, the amount of demand, the certifications that they're kind of looking for for those particular positions or other types of things. You can drill into uh, different various areas of this thing. Uh, you could drill down in here. This is just a JPEG image of it, but I really recommend you uh, take a look at cyberseek.org uh, heat map. And uh, there will be links in the um, breakout area later. Uh, I'll actually be posting the presentation as well. Plus, of course, this will be on YouTube and I'll provide the links there for them to put on the YouTube page. 
So you're going to go interview. You finally ran that gauntlet. You're, you've got the interview scheduled and everything. Um, well, you need to do a little research. You got to do some homework. Uh, don't just walk into an interview cold where you don't know anything about who you're going to be interviewing with. How long have they been in business? I mean, just some basics. Get the company history, mission statement, vision statement. Uh, it's really important to kind of get a feel of the corporation that you're going to be working for, the company or the, the organization. Um, do some research on news articles and stuff. Have they been in the news for charitable events? Or have they been in the news for SEC violations? If they have been in the news for whatever, you want to get a feel of the uh, culture of the organization. Um, obviously, if they've been in the news for lots of, uh, uh, you know, hanky-panky going on there or stuff, you want to know that before you walk in the door. You don't want to walk in there and find out that, you know, my goodness gracious, uh, you know, I, I got this wonderful job at, say, the scooter store, and they're constantly under the investigation of the federal government. Hmm. Uh, yeah, I, I probably should have known that before I got that job. Um, uh, I, I had a lot of friends that worked at Scooter, and um, uh, obviously, you know, when you when you got out of there early, uh, they they did a little bit better. When the mass of people were let go when they shut that thing down, it was a lot more difficult for them to uh, find positions. So uh, check LinkedIn, see who works there. Maybe you know someone that works there that you can contact and uh, have them put in a good word for you and stuff. I've done that a number of times for people uh, over the years. And uh, when they when they check me out and they, they you know find out that I'm working someplace or whatever, they don't hesitate to let me know. And, and you know, I definitely, uh, if I, you know, everything's going, I definitely put in the word, hey, I work with these people at a you know, previous employer. I want to make sure that they get the best particular position that they can. Is this place the, really the place you want to work? Once again, if you check the place out and you find out the culture isn't the culture that you're looking for, um, you should know that ahead of time. You should really probably uh, get that information uh, before you walk in the door of that interview. Okay, so this is the place you really want to work. How can you really show it to them that this is the place that you really want to work? What kind of connections do you have to that organization? Um, you know, it's that whole uh, degrees of separation. Uh, how many people do you know that, that, that do things there? If it's a financial institution, do you have an account there, right? Uh, how long have you had an account there? Um, if you'd say, a uh, business, uh, a retail front, um, a software manufacturing company. Uh, do you use their software? Uh, do you use uh, the, the companies? If it's a healthcare organization, have you ever um, visited someone in that hospital or those doctors or whatever? There's so many different ways that you can tie your personal experiences into the interview. Do it, show it, take a look at what you can um, find out and try and have some nice relatable information that you can provide in the interview. What's the interview format? So um, I'm, I'm a stickler. Whenever there's a, a, any kind of job I'm going for. Um, so many years ago, back in the 90s, I actually was looking to become a police officer. That didn't work out for me, but I learned some wonderful skills doing so. And one of the things that I did is I found out um, what was required to run the gauntlet to get that first uh, kind of seat at the table, right, to, to where you can begin the process. And so 700 people walked in to take a, a test that was like the written SAT or ACT test. And um, of the 700 people, 70 people passed that uh, part of the exam. So they only took the top 10%. Um, because I knew that going in, I was able to make sure that I had the skill sets necessary to um, work uh, the problems that that type of test uh, provided. And I was one of the 70 people. Then they said, hey, you need to uh, be able to do uh, certain physical activities after the test. Is that, is that that same day? Yeah. Take the written in the morning, physical in the afternoon. So where do you do this? Uh, well, they showed it and they said, you got to do this kind of weights and this kind of this and this kind of sit-ups and this kind of run, a uh, mile and a half on concrete in the middle of the day, in the heat, in the summer um, and stuff. So I trained 
to make sure that I was ready to do that. So at the end of the day, there were only 35 people out of the original 700 that finished the day. And I was very happy to be in that 35 uh, group. Unfortunately, like I said, the next set of culling process, I didn't make it through. It just didn't work out for, for me and them. But I learned some valuable skills on making sure that I'm prepared for that initial part of the uh, job. So contact them, ask information. Who am I going to be meeting with and, and what do they do? Uh, what, what are their positions there and stuff? Take notes. Make sure you understand what you're going to be um, asked of in that type of job interview. Who's going to be in the room, right? And once again, I talked about that. If Is it just a person that's going to be the hiring manager or is it going to be the hiring manager, HR, and the CIO or whoever? You, you really kind of want to get some idea um, to prepare. Uh, I know somebody, they went to go interview and they thought they were just going to be talking to the hiring manager and they walked in and there's like six people in the room and it made them very nervous and very reserved and stuff. And they shouldn't be, right? They, they, uh, how's it go? You worry, right? When there's something to worry about. And just because there's six people in the room versus one person in the room, it's still no reason to worry. Just continue on and do the best you can in your interview. Find out about the people. If you do get information on the um, roles or uh, the names of the people, take a look and see how they contribute to the company. Uh, how long have they been with the company and, and other information. So how do you do that? Hey, OSINT skills. <laughs> look them up. LinkedIn is a, a wonderful, wonderful place to find information uh, on uh, people and how long they've been there and the different roles that they've had uh, at an organization. Other organizations that they worked for, other roles that they've had. Um, sometimes people even post the, the charitable work or hobbies that they do. And so that's a uh, very in, uh, insightful information because you want to make sure that you're, um, you know, got your best foot forward in the job interviewing process. What do, we want to know about the people that we're interviewing, right? I'm not some HR professional. I don't have years of experience doing this uh, or anything. But there's some basic things I need to know, right? How are you going to contribute uh, to the employer or to the organization that you're working for? What can you bring to the table? So do you are you the kind of person that's going to seek out and take the initiative? In IT security, it's very important to have people that are self-starters and go-getters, right? And the things that you can show that you've done that portray you as a self-starter and go-getter, that would be really good. You have to have that inner drive a lot of times to be able to go and find out some of these problems and, and uh, tackle them. So that's, uh, that's one of the things that we're looking for, uh, for people to do that. And for some uh, people, uh, cultures and stuff, it's difficult uh, for people to be other than reserved. And uh, I recommend you work with people as much as possible to try and break out of those things. Um, a lot of people have imposter syndrome and, and stuff. I'm just as guilty as anyone else for that. And trying to break past that shell is so much uh, a part of what you need to do to do a successful interview. Because, you know, I don't want to sell myself, right? I don't want to just say, you know, I, I'm not here. There's like a marketing thing. But in some ways, that's exactly the mindset you have to be. You have to be the marketer. You're marketing yourselves and your skills to that organization. So if you have taken some examples or some initiative, have some examples that you can show that, oh, hey, I saw this problem and I self-started. I found a way to solve this problem and I attacked it and, and took care of it, uh, got whatever I needed to get that done organized it and made that kind of thing uh, happen. So that's uh, really important to be able to show that, that you can uh, contribute greatly to the organization. This is one that we've run into a lot, um, and especially in my last sets of interview uh, processes, that uh, was, was an issue. Um, so uh, the, the last set of interviews that we're doing was in January, February um, of, of this year. And so it's like, we'd ask questions. So 
what's going on in cybersecurity? Is there any news out there that's uh, happening? And when we were doing that, uh, we were expecting, you know, there's a couple of really large things going on in, in cybersecurity that are not just making the cybersecurity news, but they're making the, the news, um, the nightly news almost every night. Um, and uh, for example, one of them was the solar winds breach that happened December 13th, or at least it was publicized December 13th. Um, and in January, they're still just finding all kinds of information out about what was going on there. Um, number of the candidates uh, fully admitted that, that they weren't keeping up with cybersecurity news and stuff. So it moves fast in IT. You got to keep up to date, uh, whether you go read Leaping Computer once a week, or if you take a listen to some podcasts out there, Internet Stormcast, Cyberwire, um, there's a number of others, Tech Meme. Uh, being able to uh, keep up is really important. IT security moves even faster than IT. Um, the, uh, so, you know, Twitter, though not a uh, authoritative source there as long as you can do some original research it is a very good source for some of the breaking news type things uh you can also once again uh cyberwire has a nice daily podcast of 20 minutes and you can run it on a high speed and get through it pretty quick and it's a really great way to keep your finger on the pulse of what's going on in cybersecurity there are other podcasts out there as well but um those are pretty much a good minimum to uh, to do if you want to consume it via audio. Be prepared to answer these types of questions. Um, the employers, especially in the IT security field, want to make sure that you're engaged in the organization in, in, in your field. And being disengaged or actively disengaged is, is not going to do very well in an interview. Got initiative? What have you done for yourself lately, right? Have you earned a certificate or degree? Uh, you don't necessarily have to. Maybe you just uh, did a CTF. Maybe you're going and you contributed and you volunteered at B-Sides. That you're out there, you know, doing what you can. Um, have you read a book from the cybersecurity canon? Uh, the cybersecurity canon is a list of books that was originally started uh, by a gentleman that was at Palo Alto, but it's now it's uh, taken care of by Ohio State. Uh, there will be a link to it, and uh, they uh, get nominations for and add to the canon of books that every cybersecurity professional should read. I have not read some of those books, and I am looking forward to it. Uh, some of the books are quite obvious, like the Phoenix Project. Uh, if you are not aware of the Phoenix Project, you should be. Uh, it's an excellent book when it comes to um being able to find constraints and, and move processes along, um, find out where things can be better. How do you, uh, you know, look at a process and, and, and look at a problem and, and hopefully find some solutions for it. The other books that are out there right now is one of them is called Code Girls. It is about how women were brought in from colleges and universities to help uh, crack the um, codes during World War II. We're talking about 10,000 people that were brought in to do this work. And it was one of the more unsung uh, stories out there. Uh, it's totally uh, a, a very impressive book. So um, take a look at it. They also have fiction books out there. Um, for those that have not done it, um, one of the books that they have on there is called Cryptonomicron. It is not an easy read. It is 800 pages uh, by Neil Stevenson. But uh, that book there is, is really interesting. It's almost like, um, you know, predicting of Bitcoin, predicting of all kinds of other things out there. Uh, Neil Stevenson, uh, that and Snow Crash, it's another uh, book, a cyberpunk kind of genre. Um, but those are kind of good things to have too. So like, you know, being able to be well read uh, in the organizations or, or in the field that you're in. So what have you done for others? Have you mentored? So have you gone out, even, even anybody with any kind of skill sets, even at the beginning, um, you probably have more skills than others. So what can you do? You can go to Cyber Patriot and sign up to be a mentor there. Find a school nearby that has a Cyber Patriot um, team and offer to um, 
mentor students in particular areas. If you can teach it, you know it very well. Uh, you you're, you have to learn it well enough to teach it, right? And so um, Cyber Patriot gives everybody the opportunity to be a mentor. Uh, I am going to be uh, starting that back up again now that the pandemic is over and we're allowed to get back on school campuses uh, this next year. Uh, I'm going to be getting right back into the thick of it and becoming uh, uh, fully active again in Cyber Patriot to help these kids out. Now, Cyber Patriot isn't some just uh, weekend warrior kind of thing. It's a many month long, many uh, group long uh, event that the, let's say, uh, I know of one particular student uh, in high school that basically had full ride scholarships to multiple colleges after this, uh, they had done what they did. It truly impressive work um, that they, uh, uh, can, can teach kids in high school, uh, and, and continue on further with their career. Um, can you think, um, you know, some of the people interviewing you really want to know, do you think, how do you think, right? How do you approach a problem, especially a problem that you've never seen before? And so, you know, uh, can you, Talk out loud your thoughts and observations when working through, let's say, an exercise. Um, I give you a thing, a widget, whatever it is, uh, and uh, ask you about it and tell you to describe what you're seeing. And most likely, you've never seen the things that I would provide you. I'm an old uh, ham radio operator. I've been working with computers for over 30 years. I still have some components from 30 years ago that trust me, almost no one <laughs> born since 2000 will ever have seen these things. Um, so uh, it, it's, uh, it, but it's nice because it does give you an opportunity to uh, discuss what you're looking at. Uh, let's say it's an interface card that you've never seen on a bus structure, you probably never heard of, but you should be able to walk through and talk through uh, what's going on and what you're seeing in your hands, whether it's a, a whatever kind of device it is. So um, I've got some weird tools in the toolbox, the same kind of deal. What could this possibly be used for, right? Um, how about a question like this? What is a particular motorcycle way, right? Uh, how would you find the answer to that uh, question uh, if that was posed to you in a, in a meeting or interview process? So, you know, the nice thing about it is there's not a lot of wrong answers here. The, the Probably the only wrong answer is, I, I don't know how I would even do that. That would be a, probably the only wrong answer. Any other thing you do, whether you're saying, well, I could take uh, you know a gallon of milk that weighs this much and I could put it at the end of a fulcrum that's got a, a pivot point this distance away and pick up the motorcycle and I know how much it weighs or something. Um, you know, for me, I would look at the owner's manual <laughs> because in the owner's manual, it gives you the dry weight and the wet weight of that motorcycle. But, um, but yeah, you could, uh, you could do it a number of different ways. But once again, uh, the, only, uh, the only wrong answer there is the, the opposite of war games is not to play. You, you, you should want to play these games, right? Uh, there are many ways to do a thing. Pick one or two, go for it. Even if you, you, um, you come up with multiple ways of doing it. Give them all out there and stuff. Because people want to know that you can think through issues. Because we're going to find unknowable um, uh, and things that we have to learn on the fly problems. And the thing is, you got to be able to be engaged with that. Um, get help and network. Um, clear jobs. Clear jobs. Sponsor here of this uh, particular um, track. Uh, it is uh, an excellent place. If you have clearance, I tro totally uh, recommend Kathleen and their group to uh, help find you positions out there. Um, if there is a local ISSA or ISC squared chapter meeting, do it. B-sides, get involved, volunteer. And um, there are other local uh, IT groups and even larger IT groups that are out there um, sign up for them, look for them on LinkedIn, uh, look for more in-person organizations so you can network in the future. Anybody have any questions or anything? Trying to take a look here in the track. And 
Okay, and oh, I got a breakout question. Hey, Kathleen, I'll get in the interview track. Okay. <laughs> um, but yeah, uh, uh, so that kind of gives you some rundown. Uh, is there any questions or anything that uh, they might have? Uh, moderator here. Thanks, Paul. Um, yeah, I don't see any other questions. Uh, I checked Discord and the questions in here, and I do not see any right now. Okay, and um, just got a quick question here. Yeah, uh, there you go. Uh, I'm reading Code Girls right now. Um, that's a, it's an excellent book. It really is. It deserves to be in the cybersecurity canon for sure. Well, with that, uh, I hope everybody does well in their interview and aces it in the future. Um, you know, uh, uh, look at the nice document from NIST. Find out and make sure that you uh, are in alignment with the type of positions that you're looking to do in the future. Um, stretch those goals out as far as you can and, and keep reaching uh, for, the, for the next level there. Uh, thank you all, all very much for your time. All right. Thanks, Paul. That was a lot of great information there for everybody.